Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me today for another video in the beginner series. Today we're gonna to be talking about farming for legendary characters, the best routes you wanna go in, for which characters, because some events you can use, you don't have to use strictly five characters, there are certain ones that you can use instead, how to farm them, where it's at, what order to get the legendaries in. So buckle up, get ready, because here we go. This one is gonna be a good one. All right, so we're just gonna jump into it. There's a ton of information to cover here. I thought about making separate videos for these, but I just didn't wanna put out that much stuff. I thought that might be a little extra. So we're gonna try and go through this as quickly as possible, but covering as much information as possible. All right, so the very first legendary character ever to be released into the game was Iron Man. You unlock him by using shield characters. What you can see really quickly is that there's about a million shield characters. He is one of the easiest unlocks available, probably the easiest unlock available for legendaries. It's easy. I mean, you don't even have to worry about him at first if you don't want to because power armor is kind of a hard farm and that's the only team that he goes with. So it might honestly be better to not even go for him first because once you have Nick Fury, you're gonna have the shield team to go along with him or you should have a shield team to go along with him and then you could do Iron Man with shield. But in case you're chomping at the bit, you wanna do them in the proper correct order. The team that I used was Captain America, Black Widow, Quake, Hawkeye, I think Shield Medic and Shield Security. Now, the easiest way to do this, I mean, Quake, you can get her right on out of the arena store, easy. Hawkeye, he is a node, two nodes. That's what I thought, two nodes, so he's pretty easy. He's a solid character in the early game as well. So that's already two characters. Then you got Shield Security, also in the store. He is in arena store and has a node just in case you wanna go super quick on him. And then Black Widow, you can't farm her, so I don't recommend going that route. I just happen to have her. You could farm her back in the beta. She was available that way. So then Shield Medic is available on nodes. I would typically recommend really, I mean, it's up to you. If you're gonna be farming nodes, why not just farm a node for a character that's good down the road? Not that Hawkeye is bad, just that this is the only event he can be used for, and so why not just go ahead and farm some of these other shield characters you're gonna to wanna to have later with Nick Fury. That is my recommendation. Captain America is amazing. Arguably the best solo tank in the game. He can fit into almost any team, so I definitely recommend farming him. He's great. He was my favorite character for a very long time. He's got two nodes, maybe a third soon. We don't even know. I actually have never seen this before. So right now, the team that I really recommend is Shield Minions, and then feel free to swap in Quake or Captain America in the meantime, but Shield Minions are really gonna be good for you. I wouldn't really worry about farming Shield Operative. She's not that useful. I, She's just not. I farmed her because I thought that I needed her, but then turns out I did not. So my recommendation is Shield Trooper, who has a node and is in the raid store. Probably be easiest to get him off of his node. And then from there, you go Shield Security from the shop, Shield Medic from a node, Shield Assault from a node, and then Captain America's on a node, Quake's on a node. You can kind of like interchange that however you want. Say maybe you can't really farm Captain America right now, so you want to just do these five, or vice versa, but those are the recommended ones, are somewhere from this pool of six. So that's pretty easy, right? Iron Man's the easiest, most simple one. Again, a lot of the stuff you naturally just accumulate. Next one in my recommended order of farming, starting now. <laughs> Iron Man doesn't necessarily need to be your first one. He can be, but he doesn't have to be. But I think that Star-Lord will probably be many people's first farmed legendary. I recommend that. Iron Man just kind of comes. So like I said, I got him first because it just naturally came that way. So it's not necessarily a recommendation. It's just kind of what I got. Star-Lord, I definitely recommend to be the first one that you farm, the way that you get him, is through Guardians or Ravengers. A lot of people I've actually found did not realize that you could farm Star-Lord with Ravengers. Now, does that really help you out that much? Not really. That pretty much just makes it so you can use Yondu. Yondu's a great early game character. Ideally, the team that you want to farm for Star-Lord would be Groot, Drax, Rocket, Gamora, Mantis. The reason for this is because that's a solid team. The Ravengers aren't gonna help you at all. Ravenger Boomer is easy to farm, but he's entirely useless. That will be up to you if you want to farm him. He is in the 
Blitz store, I believe, Blitz or Arena. I can't remember off the top of my head because it's been so long since I farmed him, but Blitz or Arena store, he's in there. And so you can farm him that way and he's easier, you know, he's easier than farming Rocket out of the raid store. But your team with Ro your team with Star-Lord is not gonna be that good without Rocket. So that's something that I would recommend. You can get the team. Star-Lord's amazing. He can fit into any team. That is a true fact. So maybe you're saying, okay, I just want to get Star-Lord. I can put him in my team and we'll go from there. Okay, well then you probably want to do Ravenger Boomer instead of Rocket. But for long-term period planning, Groot is amazing. Drax is pretty good because he's the only character who auto taunts at the beginning of a match or when he's revived. Rocket is amazing. Gamora is okay. And Mantis is amazing with Drax. And when she's higher level, she heals like crazy. So when you get this, say if you're using this team, which is the team I recommend, you can just swap Star-Lord into Gamora's place. And then that is the team. That would be the team that you could use right there. Now, of course, later on when you get Minerva and other characters like that, Thanos, you want to put those in there because they're better. They have better synergies than maybe like Drax or Mantis. But starting off, that's what you want to look at. Now, I personally really like Yondu. I think he's a really cool character. So maybe you can be farming all these characters, but say maybe you get Yondu to five star before you get Rocket to five star, then of course there's no problem using him for the event. Yeah, of course. I mean, no problem there. But I think Yondu's amazing. Maybe you guys don't care about Yondu. That's fine. Maybe you want to do Ravenger Boomer because it's easier. Uh, nothing wrong with that. So that's the way that Star-Lord works. The event is... Uh, I didn't have any trouble with it, but my Yondu was really strong because he was my favorite character. So he was another one of my favorite characters, I should say. And um, so it was pretty easy. My Rocket was always pretty strong. My Gamora I really liked, so I had her pretty strong. And so that for me was how I did it. I didn't really ever remember the event being hard because I used Ravenger Boomer as my fifth and that was on the seven star unlock. I used him as my fifth and he did nothing. I think I had him at like 200 power or something like level 30 gear three or something. And it was fine because I used these other characters to carry these other characters very strong. The event's not that hard at all. Same with Iron Man. Now some of the events are hard and we will touch on that, but this one I didn't think was that hard if you have characters at the relevant power levels. Uh, if you guys are familiar with Casino's content, if you're not, look him up. He's awesome. He's another Marvel Strike Force content creator. On his Discord, he has like graphics that show the average power that your team should be for going to these events. Definitely check that out. If you need help with that, uh, comment or ping me on Discord and I can get that on over to you. All right. So next legendary character that you ought to be working towards is Nick Fury. He is absolutely amazing 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 he takes a just completely just dead set of characters which is shield minions and he makes them just top tier they're not as good as they used to be because of introductions of characters like magneto strong guardians teams x-men power armor it's not as good as they used to be but they are still top five in my opinion so shield great amazing you want that and that's gonna help you later on in like Enter the Darkness. That was something that I struggled with and then I finally got my Nick Fury to six star and Enter the Darkness was a breeze. And we're gonna talk more about Enter the Darkness and Fear the Darkness in a later video. We've got a beginner's guide to both of those coming out soon. But Nick Fury, amazing. So you need Kree characters, right? Not just, not only Kree characters, you need Kree minions. Actually didn't even realize you could sort by minions. That's pretty cool. So Kree minions, these are the characters that you will need. They're a little harder to do because most of them are nodes. So Kree Reaper, two nodes. It's tough, but you gotta do it. Royal Guard, easy peasy. He comes out of the Blitz store, not a problem. He is very easy to finish off. Kree Cyborg, got some nodes. I think just one. Oh no, he's got two nodes as well. High energy cost though. Kree Noble, she has nodes, I believe just one, okay, I was wrong, two. I think they all have two, actually, now that I say that. And then Kree Oracle has one, oh, he doesn't. He used to have a node and he was in the raid store. Now he's just in the raid store, so that's a little harder. That's a similar farm to Rocket, except he costs, Kree Oracle costs a little less because he's a minion. So those are the characters that you need. These guys are hard. They suck up a lot of energy, a lot of energy. So when you begin farming these guys, it'll be after you already have unlocked Star-Lord. You might have an okay Guardians team. And so it's a bit of a longer farm. It really is. And I will also say the event is actually pretty hard because I tried to skimp by and that was no good. This is the team that I used 
at the seven star event. I'm not sure if they rebalance the events for red stars. If they don't, then nobody will have a problem with this. But the five star one is really difficult. I had a really hard time until I powered up my Cree Reaper to about where she's at now, maybe like around 38,000 or so. And um, this was before red stars when I did the five star event. And it was tough. It was really tough. And so she just because she can just blast people with this ability this ability is really really strong especially if you pair her with Cree noble and this of course was before the rework and stuff too but um you know just a quick tip uh, you want to always have Cree noble on the end with Cree, uh with Cree reaper right next to her so she will always call in reaper to assist give offense up and then it's like a double whammy uh this Cree reaper can hit for 80 90 000 damage twice in a row and put heal block on somebody so that's just a quick tip but this team is a bit harder to farm so it just kind of fits in wherever you are in your schedule of farming you know defenders guardians whatever these guys are really good and i recommend that like just i guess like an overarching notion that i've said many times before you want to get these characters to five star right so you want to continue working on all of them but really, I recommend five star the first time around. It's better to have a five star Star Lord and a five star Nick Fury than to have a seven star Nick Fury and no Star Lord, or vice versa. That's my opinion. Some people are going to disagree with that, but I 100% agree with it. And I think you can do it. I mean, it took me a while to farm all this stuff, but I was happy to have like I was happy to have all the legendaries instead of not having any. You know what I mean? Or just having one strong one, one weak one whatever or one strong one and none back to our list here next one you ought to be working on is our boy magneto so magneto is amazing he's really really amazing so for magneto you're going to be using x-men characters and you're going to be using brotherhood characters so x-men characters you can actually use phoenix i used phoenix for the seven star or for the six star version of magneto it was really easy but I don't understand. There's no reason a beginner character will have six or seven star Phoenix. But you will have Wolverine because you get him from the daily login. That's easy. Storm, I had. I'd been farming her because back in the day when raid nodes were really hard, you would use Storm. And the other Brotherhood were not even farmable. So I had Wolverine and Storm plus Brotherhood characters. These guys should be farmable sometime soon. If they become relatively easily farmable, that will mean that this needs to be updated because I definitely recommend farming these guys up anyways because they're good with a Phoenix team. But if I had to throw one out, I would probably throw Psylocke out. She's great, but she's not better than Colossus. So you, I recommend this is the way I did it. I did Wolverine because everybody has Wolverine. And then I did Storm. And then we can go to Brotherhood. And then I used Juggernaut. He was used to be in a raid, but now he's in the arena store. And that's an easy farm. Sabretooth, he used to just be nothing. He had a campaign event, but then he got added to the raid store. So he's good from the raid store. That's easy enough. Mystique is probably one that if I had to recommend that you skip out on, I would probably recommend you skip out on Mystique. Her farm takes a long time. And while she's on a node, uh, energy is, of course, very valuable at this stage of the game that you're in right now. So Mystique I'd probably pass up on because she's not all that integral to the Brotherhood team. She's amazing. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to see any comments of me. I can't believe you wouldn't have Mystique. <laughs> Whatever. She is the weakest link to the team and the most unnecessary. Pyro you have got to have. So you might as well be farming him anyways. He comes out of the War Store, which is hard. That's one of the hardest ones to do. He had a bunch of blitzes, which made him easier to get for us back in the day. But he's pretty hard to get now because of the war store. So that's why I recommend if you go Juggernaut, Sabretooth, Wolverine, Storm, and then maybe Mystique. And then maybe if Colossus or Psylocke become farmable, if either of them are an easy farm, that's what I initially will recommend for you to unlock Magneto. Because if you have Magneto and Juggernaut, they can pair with other teams and become really, really good. Juggernaut and Magneto paired with Ultron makes one of the best teams in the game as far as Arena goes right now. So you don't even have to have the rest of these. Of course... For a pure Brotherhood team, you could simply farm this whole team. But Mystique can be replaced in like fighting or like in matches with uh, Venom, Carnage, 
Uh, either of those can be really, really good replacements for Mystique if you have the rest of this team because it's debuff related. So this is the pure team. I don't know. It's kind of hard because Pyro is so hard to get. You definitely want to get him though because he makes a huge difference. I mean, he's very imperative to be on this team. Very, very imperative. You can't really run a pure Brotherhood team without Pyro. Next, Legendary. All right, so this one is really, really interesting, right? Really, really interesting. So Invisible Woman and Shuri can be unlocked with the exact same team. The exact same team. Now that team is Sinister Six. Shuri can be unlocked with regular Spider-Verse. Invisible Woman can be only unlocked with specifically Sinister Six, but Shuri can also be unlocked with Sinister Six. This team is definitely the team to use. I love Carnage, I love Venom. They're amazing. Green Goblin's amazing. I like Miles, I like Spider-Man, but in full just effort to streamline everything, you, you're gonna farm this team. Farm this team for Shuri and Invisible Woman. Uh, Green Goblin, he's got uh, a node, it's kind of a pain in the butt, but he's got a node. I got him out of a bunch of elite orbs, so I was able to finish him pretty quick, or some mega orbs, excuse me. And then Rhino, he's in the Blitz store. Easy, easy farm, right? So easy farm from the Blitz store. Vulture, he's in the arena store, so it's a very easy, easy farm from the store. Then you have Shocker, he's a little bit of a pain because he only has the one 20 cost node. That's exhausting. And then Mysterio is kind of tough because he's in the raid store. So maybe you say, all right, well, I'm going to unlock Sherry before I get Invisible Woman. So I'm going to do Rhino, Vulture, Spider-Man, Venom, uh, Green Goblin. I don't know. Whatever combination you want to do, you can. And so that's pretty nice. It's pretty cool. And uh, it just, it's easier because there's so many characters here. I mean, a couple of these are pretty easy farms. Spider-Man's easy. He is in the Blitz store. That's easy. Venom is pretty easy because he is, he's got a node. It's not a super high cost node. Miles is in the Blitz store as well. So that's an easy farm. There's a lot of options when it comes to this, but if you keep in mind that, hey, I could Im unlock Invisible Woman and Shuri with the exact same team, you know, maybe you don't get them until later on. Shuri is still kind of up in the air. She's not, she doesn't really make the Wakanda team all that good. They're not impressive right now. A lot of people give me hate for standing by that opinion. They're not a good team. If someone can show me something impressive with them, feel free. But that said, you can really farm both of those characters with the same team because you don't need to be in all that much of a rush to get Shuri. Like, she's just fine and that's okay. So it might not be the worst if you just farm Sinister Six for both teams. The Shuri event was not that hard, but I have strong Spider-Verse. I'm not sure where that stands at. Uh, sorry, going. I meant to give difficulty with Magneto event. That one wasn't hard either. I had no trouble with that one. Now, arguably the best standalone legendary is our girl Phoenix. I love Phoenix. She's really cool, has some very unique just mechanics that not other characters have, but she is by far one of the hardest characters to farm for so you need let's see controller mystic where is it at all right there villains this is the team that you need for phoenix you have to have them at six or seven star every other legendary unlock is five star keep that in mind every other one is five star phoenix is six star so mordo he is in the arena store that's easy enough Ronan, he's in the raid store. I recommended to not necessarily worry about farming him in my last video. If you're a beginner character, you don't need to be investing in this because Phoenix is gonna be very far off for you. I really don't recommend that at all. You will eventually need him. He makes a good Kree team and you can get him through the raid store. Again, is this is a later farm. Hand Assassin is just awful. Uh, one node, 120 cost node, that's an awful farm. Loki, he is on one of the hardest nodes. One of the hardest nodes to beat. He's not the hardest. Vision is the hardest. But this is a really hard node to beat on three star. That is one that uh, if you guys want me to make a video on the Loki node, I will. I think with red stars, it's probably a bit easier now. But back when I was doing it without red stars, it was really hard. Now, this, it's again, it's, it's the same as Hand Assassin though. It's just one 20 cost node. Nobu, 
The hard part with him is that Nobu is not good anymore. And we've theorycrafted a lot about this. He again is just a single 20 cost node. So it's really tough because this character is bad. This character is bad. They're both very hard to farm. Loki is decent, but he's a really hard farm. Ronin is really good. He makes the Kree a lot better and he's in all right farm. But uh, Mordo is the only easy one on this team. He's the only easy one that you can farm. Uh, this event was actually pretty, it, it was pretty hard. It took me a couple tries, but I was able to get through it because my Mordo is really strong. Your team would probably need to be a good bit stronger than this for the seven star. I'd probably recommend everybody being really close to 40,000, I think, to balance it out because they don't have any synergy. So that's how you're going to get Phoenix. Overall, these are amazing characters. Of course they are. They're the legendary characters. They should be the best in the game. Um, all that withstanding, they are good. We haven't seen Invisible Woman in action yet, but she is looking to be amazing with Fantastic Four. I don't know how good she's going to be as a standalone character. Shuri's kind of weird. I think she fits better in uh, tech hybrid teams than she does in uh, Wakanda teams. Nick Fury is amazing. He can go with any team or he's really good with shield. Iron Man is meh. He's all right, but you put him in power armor and it's amazing. Phoenix is amazing. She's amazing with X-Men. She's amazing with anybody. She is a really good standalone character. Star-Lord is very, very good with Guardians, but he's mostly just good with Rocket, to be honest. And uh, that's awesome. He's really, really good with Rocket and Groot, but he can also, again, be on his own team because he gives adjacent energy. It's awesome. Magneto, he's good, but he really needs at least Juggernaut to be with him to make him good, but he is good on his own as well. All of these characters are some of the best characters in the game. So you definitely want to be looking out for them. You want to be keeping an eye out for this farming, for doing this. It's kind of hard because it just depends on where you're at. And there's going to be new characters that are introduced all the time. We don't know who's going to be next, what they're going to be needed, how good they're going to be. If there is someone who comes out, maybe it'll be a little bit of an easier farm for your roster. And maybe you might say, hey, I don't really have Fantastic Four. I don't have Wakandans. I'm going to hold off on Sinister Six and I'm going to farm XYZ for whatever character that I do have teams for. You know what I mean? So it's just going to depend on that really and, and time can go on. I can update this and do another version if we get more and more legendaries and go from there. But so far, I think that this covers everything. I hope it helps you guys. I think that uh, this is going to be great for newer players to see this and just be able to pivot themselves towards it. I hope that, you know, you can then instead not be spending energy on characters that are not so good. Like say, for example, Hawkeye, Yondu. We mentioned both of those guys in here. Goodish characters, but they don't really help you all that much. They help you in ways that can be done a bit better. Instead of farming Yondu, maybe farm Groot. Instead of farming Hawkeye, farm Captain America. Those things would have, they make a big difference at the end of the day. They make a big, big difference because you can farm those characters and you get better characters along the way. So you're accomplishing the same goal, but getting better characters along the way. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching today. If this video helped you, please leave a like on it because that helps me. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions or if there's anything that you think that I missed or I could have said better, please let me know so I can improve and grow. I always want to do that. And make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, join up with the Beard Gang. You know you want it. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll have another video coming out very soon. I'm not exactly sure what we're going to be covering. So you got to subscribe so you can be there and see what it is. Okay.